So in the previous lecture we discussed about the relation between edge length and height of the unit cell for HCP and we derived the relation as C is equal to 1.633 A where A is the edge length of the unit cell and C is the height of the unit cell. Now let's continue the calculation of APF for HCP unit cell Now from the previous uh, derivations of APF for BCC and FCC we know that we require number of atoms per unit cell. So let's see now how many atoms are there per unit cell in case of HCP. So let's draw the representation, re reduced sphere representation of HCP unit cell, which is a hexagonal prism atom situated at all the corners of face. as well as at the face center and we have three whole atoms inside the unit cell. So we have already seen that this particular atom is shared by six unit cell so we can say this is one by six so we have 1 by 6 into how many such units how many such atoms we have 1 2 3 4 5 6 as well as 1 2 3 4 5 6 so 1 by 6 into 6 plus we have this atom which is shared by two unit cells so we can say one half of the atom will remain in this unit cell so one half into how many such atoms we have we have one over here second over here so let's say one half into two plus we have three whole atoms which will not be shared by multiple unit cells so we can directly write three so this gives us one plus one oh i'm sorry uh, it, this should be one by six into twelve not six so one by six into twelve so this gives us two so that will give us 2 plus 1 plus 3 which is equal to 6 so we have number of atoms per unit cell for HCP is equal to 6 so using this if we write total atom volume for HCP unit cell so that will be 6 into 4 by 3 pi r cube so which gives us 8 pi r cube ok so if we represent this by VA then we have VA is equal to 8 pi r cube now what about vc that means volume of unit cell so to find out volume of unit cell let us consider this face and on this face we can see we have equilateral triangles this all will be equilateral triangles right so if I draw this face then we can say 
we have we have atoms situated at each corner which will be touching each other or these atoms are touching each other as well as if the face center we have one atom which will be touching all these atoms and this arrangement makes equilateral triangles so let's say this is a b c d e and f as we know that edge length is represented by a so here we can write this is a small a this is o and this will be 60 degree the angle of this will be 60 degree now out of this if i represent a single triangle so let's i am representing a o b So this is the triangle AOB. So let's say this is A, O, and B. And let me say this is point P. That is midpoint of AB. And this is 60 degree. Right. So by considering this triangle, what we can say? by considering this triangle we can say area of equilateral triangle aob is equal to 1/2 into ab into op so this this is 1/2 into ab into as we know this is 60 degree we can write op as ao sin of 60 degree so that gives us 1/2 as we know that edge length is represented by a and as this is equilateral triangle if ab is a then ao is also a ob is also a so we can say this is a this is and this is also a so instead of ab we can write a instead of ao also we can write a and into sin of 60 degree so this this gives us the area of the triangle root 3 by 4 a square okay so this gives us area of the triangle is root 3 by 4 a square now if you want to find area of this face if you want to find area of this face what we can do 6 multiplied by area of this triangle so we can write area of hexagonal face is equal to 6 into root 3 by 4 a square so that can be 3 root 3 by 2 a square also we know that a is equal to 2r why because as we specified on this face this atoms are touching each other so if this is a then this is r and this is r so you can say a is equal to 2r right so instead of now let, let's let's write it as a is equal to 2r area is equal to this the same equation if you put a is equal to 2r over here area will be 
सिक्स आर स्क्वायर रूट थ्री सिक्स आर स्क्वायर रूट थ्री राइट नाउ इफ यू वॉन्ट टू फाइंड वॉल्यूम सो वॉल्यूम ऑफ द सेल वी सी इज इक्वल टू एरिया ऑफ एक्सागोनल फेस मल्टीप्लाइड बाई हाइट ऑफ द यूनिट सेल so the area is 6r square into root 3 and the height is c but we know that c is equal to 1.663 a now again we know that a is equal to 2r right so if we again put a is equal to 2r and if we simplify this we will get vc is equal to 33.878 r cube so this is vc now apf is equal to we already found the total atom volume so apf is equal to va by vc so that gives us 8 pi r cube divided by 33.878 r cube so let's say this is apf of hcp so apf of hcp is equal to 0.74 Okay, so this is so. If you notice, the APF of HCP is same as APF of FCC. That is zero point seven four. So now. to summarize the calculation of apf we can write apf for bcc is 0.68 apf for fcc is 0.74 and apf of hcp is also 0.74 so from this calculations and if we get these values we can say that there is more empty space available in case of bcc compared to fcc and hcp inside the unit cell all right so further we will use these values while we will discuss the types of solid solutions but for now this is the summary of what we have calculated now the next topic to discuss is crystal systems so as conveyed in the previous lecture we have limited our discussion to bcc fcc and hcp unit cells only but it is possible to define more crystal systems more than this three right so what is crystal system so crystal system is nothing but it is the particular arrangement different but different arrangement of atoms which we get by varying the 
crystal parameters. So crystal systems are defined by crystal parameters. Now what are these crystal parameters? So if I draw a unit cell, this is a general unit cell, it is not any particular unit like BCC, FCC or HCP. This is a general unit cell. If I draw this unit cell and then if I locate this coordinate system at any of this corner, so right now I have located it over here, then the length of this edge is length of this edge is are called as crystal parameters. Okay, so let's say this is x, this is y axis and this is z axis and we have along the x axis the edge length is represented by A, along the y axis the edge length is represented by B and along the z axis the edge length is represented by C. So these are crystal parameters. Also angle between this axis are also crystal parameters. So let's define angle between y and z as alpha, angle between x and z as beta and angle between x and y as gamma. So this alpha, beta, gamma and a, b, c they are nothing but crystal parameters. Now if I vary the values of a, b, c, alpha, beta, gamma I can get different, para different crystal systems. For example if I keep a is equal to b is equal to c and alpha is equal to beta is equal to gamma and that is equal to 90 degree then using this values of crystal parameters I can define cubic system I can define cubic system okay so similarly I, we can define different types of crystal systems by varying these values so let's end this lecture over here and in the next lecture we will define different crystal systems with different values of crystal parameters.